Hey, everybody. Ooh, I don't know why my phone's going off. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys for coming. First of all, shout out to everybody. Um, I know you guys are here for something. I have a guest. Yes, I do. <laughs> shout out to everybody. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're hitting the like button and you're subscribing. I want to thank all the mods that are working really hard in the chat and all the new members. Shout out to you guys. Let me go ahead and bring Mr. Aaron. All right. Hi. Hey there. You don't need an introduction, just so you know. So I'm like, Miss. Everybody knows who Mr. Aaron is. You know. <laughs> Shout out to you. Uh, I love it when you call me a Aaron in your videos. I had, you know, I had to stop that because when I was first doing coverage, I found myself saying a Aaron all the time. It's just catchy. And then somebody in the chat said, "Okay, Rabbit, shut up. Like that's a little too much." <laughs> so it is. Anyway, I just oh. want to start by saying how much I've loved your coverage of everything that's been going on. Uh, it's actually been really, really helpful to me personally to to see it and get some perspective on how things are viewed from the outside. Um, and uh, I meant to give you a shout out in the second video that I did, but I didn't. But I meant to. <laughs> no but really, worries. thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I, you know, and as somebody as an outsider, right. And as I was explaining to Sterling, you know, some of us don't know the lingo. Some of us watch you guys and are learning as we're going. Um, it was, I kind of had my doubts about doing coverage because mm. I don't know the dynamics other than what you guys are showing. So I hope like my part of me was saying, I hope I'm not overstepping, but this is truly just an assessment of the situation. Um, maybe not knowing all the facts, but hearing and feeling all the feelings that were coming from you and from those in the uh, board. I hope that, well, you know, I mean, I, I'm, you knocked it out of the park really. And that's not, uh, <clears throat> I, I there, it's not just because a lot of your coverage was, you know, somewhat fair and um, favorable yeah. to me, but I just felt like uh, you were willing to consider everything and look at everything and, and even assume, even if that was true, this is what I would think about it. And that's, that's part the part that I really appreciated. Absolutely, and it, not even to um, assume negativity of of anybody, but I I think one thing that I took away was what, that you guys knew each other for many many years, and to have something like this happen the way that it did, that's why it landed. Like even as a person, um, I don't know if you know everybody is doing right by this situation. So that's kind of what my stance was. There was something that you said on your video though your second video at the eight minute mark where you really got worked up and you just, and, and I had to even pause it while I was reviewing you because I said, what's going on? Like, I don't know, Aaron, you, you are a firecracker on YouTube. Like you, you just, you're amazing. I remember, uh, and this is, I've, I've been a long time subscriber of yours, but I remember specifically when people were coming for the Jane Doe's for Chrissy Bixler, for example, and you sat there and you said, people want to come for her. Well, they're going to have to come for the whole nation because we stand behind the victims. And I was just like, what's going on? What is going on? Can you talk about that? Can you let me know? You mean about coming for the Jane Doe's? No specifically that eight minute mark on the video like it just felt like you just got so worked up and i just wanted to get into what did i say part. you when you were reading the letter yes and there was a part where um you were referencing an email okay that was put in the aftermath foundation statement and I, you know, I could hear it in your voice that you got worked up. And so I just, I didn't understand. And I think it left a lot of us that do support your channel kind of like, you know, what, what happened? You know, um, there is a lot that you, I guess you haven't said, and I'm, I'm kind of curious to know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> whatever you can get into, of course. Okay. I want you to breathe and take your time. Just breathe. I'm trying. Okay. You're talking about the five-year thing and my marriage thing. Whatever you can get into, sir. I mean, like I said, a, a Ron, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whatever you can get into. Um, I don't, I don't want to um, put any words in your mouth or anything. Yeah. So, <clears throat> okay, caveat here. I'm very short on sleep and I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> 
I'm probably not in the best headspace, but we're going to, we're going to do all this anyway. Okay. Um, everything I have been blackmailed about over the last five years, um, everything I've tried, people have tried to humiliate me or shame me for, um, is, and, and that I've never defended myself on, um, has been out of a respect of my my wife's privacy. Okay. Yeah. So about five years ago, and honestly, I don't know whether it's four or five because with COVID, my whole sense of time is totally screwed up. Meaning that it just not like, not, I'm not talking about the after effects of COVID. I mean, the, the having a year thrown in the trash has messed up my sense of time. But in that paragraph, when I said, uh, I was basically apologizing for how careless I've been the last five years. That reference to five years was referred to the fact that about five years ago, my wife and I sat down and basically said, this is insane. Like we are fucking miserable. Yeah. Now it was, it was me really sitting us down. And I said, I'm not going to keep living like this. We are miserable. We have nothing in common. We barely enjoy each other's company. Aww. And um and, and we said, and if let and, and we both know that if we did not have kids, we would have been divorced five times already. And she goes, That's true. That's true. I mean, honestly, it became it, it, it and, and here's the thing, here's the thing. People are gonna go, oh my god, it's so terrible. Oh my god, it's so terrible. Guys, my wife and I got married after knowing each other for like three months, 20 years ago. Oh, this man. is a sad tale. We should get a medal for keeping our nuclear family together for 20 years. Yeah. We got married in the Sea Org. We met in the Sea Org. And by the way, the only reason it took us three months to get married is because her seniors wouldn't approve her to marry me until I disconnected from my father. So, like, we would, <laughs> if it were not for that, we would have gotten married after knowing each other for three weeks. Because that's the Sea Org. We didn't even know. You don't even know a person after three weeks. You don't know a person after three months. No. Mm. Wow. Now, due to the nature of, you know, when you want to leave the Sea Org, you're not allowed to talk to your spouse about wanting to leave the Sea Org. And, uh, you know, it's really uh, hard to think about this. But, you know, the way my wife and I got out of the Sea Org without it being very, very difficult to leave is she was pregnant. My wife and I never even had a conversation where we agreed we were going to get pregnant. Yeah. We were so having to follow the rules of the Sea Org and follow the rules of Scientology that, I mean, obviously in order to get pregnant, it requires cooperation. But, so, but imagine not being allowed to have a conversation with your spouse about, we're going to do this, right? Absolutely. Imagine having it to be, you do something, you do a little thing and see if they object. They do a little thing and see if you object. You do a little thing and see. It's a, a carefully orchestrated little dance of like, we're not going to say what we're doing here, but we both know what we're doing here, right? <laughs> My point in, in what I'm saying right there is we didn't even have communication at that stage of our marriage that we were now going to create a family. You know, like we weren't even allowed to talk about that. Okay. So my point is that by the time we leave the Sea Org or when we leave the Sea Org, we're already having a family and we're only now even finding out whether we have anything in common. Okay. This isn't intended to be a big, sad sob story. This is, no. I mean, we, we were in a fucking cult. This Absolutely. is how it happens. Okay. So my point is, if someone were to go, oh, where did it all go wrong? I don't know that it was ever going right. We were just doing what we needed to do. Okay. And, you know, 
I, my wife and I both were raised in somewhat turbulent um, home situations. Um, I was raised by a mostly single mother. Do not have a lot of fond memories of my childhood. We are both phenomenal parents and love our kids to death. Our kids love us to death. Um, we are great. We are great with our kids and our kids love us. <laughs> and, you know, at that time when I sat down with her, I said, I'm not going I'm not going to be miserable for the rest of my life. And I said, you know, I don't rely on you for my happiness. If I'm unhappy, I don't go, hi, I'm unhappy. Can you help me feel better? And I said, and you shouldn't rely on, on me for yours. Like you need to figure out how to be happy. Whatever you need to do to figure out how to be happy, you need to do it. Cause that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah. And I said, at the time, the language that I used was open marriage. I said, you know, I'm not asking for a divorce. Because I want us both to be able to see our kids. I want us both to be able to see our kids every morning and every night. And there's really nothing that's more important to me than that. And I couldn't even imagine having our kids to decide who they were going to spend Christmas with. I was like, oh. I, can't, I can't even imagine that. Right. And yet I have friends who, who you know, have divorced and have kids. And to be honest, sometimes the kids freaking love it. Two Christmases? That's amazing. <laughs> the kids win but, with all the toys. <laughs> <laughs> but our kids were much our kids were much younger then. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, I I have always worried whether we were doing more damage to the kids by modeling a somewhat unloving partnership to them than we would be doing by then then we would be doing to them by having their parents not be together. And you never know the right answer to that question. No. It'd be one thing if we were just fighting like cats and dogs all the time, but but we don't. I mean, there was a period there when, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was declared, she was being declared, she was going to lose her family where things were very, very bad. There was a lot of yelling going on in the household. Oh, man. And, um, and and that was not good, but it hasn't been that way for years. Like, uh, it, it's been pretty calm for years. And uh, the status quo is something I've been become complacent with, as I'm sure she has. Um, by the way, to the viewers, I'm coming down with some, finally after all my traveling and lack of sleep, I'm starting to get a bit sick. So I'm just going to be drinking a ton of water. Please do. Please do. Always good to... Recoup. So, and I just want you to know, like, just, just so you're aware, um, when I was covering the situation, somebody in the chat, in the comments, had said, you know, we love Aaron, uh, flaws and bruises and all. So I, I think that that resonated with me because you have created a community that has your back and that, you know, understands you and seeks to continue to understand you, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because um, Mark and Mike know exactly about my marital situation and they have for many, many years. So part of my upset, um, about all of this has been them acting like I'm somehow behaving immorally or betraying my wife and my daughters. Mike Rinder used that exact language. Aaron has betrayed his wife and his daughters and his family. He used that language in an email to Luis Garcia when oh. Luis Garcia stepped down. Okay. And they know goddamn well that for our own reasons and to do what we think is best for our kids in our family, we have essentially been separated, but living together for many years now. Uh, in the beginning, I was using the term, the, the, the language open marriage. And somebody recently pointed out to me, I was like, eh, 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 the, what, what you guys, that's not an open marriage. You guys are separated living together. I said, mm -hmm. You're, that's actually correct. Now we do actually have two separate houses. It's just that I don't officially live in the second house. I just spend most of my time where I record is a second house about a block away from where I live. Okay. I own both, both homes. Um, and those guys know that me having relationships with people is not me cheating on my wife. They know that. 
and they You've chose been to pretend. You've been transparent oh. about your situation to to them. Yes. What, okay. Everyone in my life knows about my marital situation. Okay. Here's the problem. Not everyone in my wife's life knows about our marital situation. And it is only out of respect for her privacy that I've never discussed this in my videos. Um, mm -hmm. Because why the hell would I? Even when Scientology has stuff up on the website about me, about uh, Aaron cheats on his wife, I've never said anything. I don't care what Scientology says about me. And I and everyone in my life knows that I don't cheat on my wife. We're separated. Okay. And Mike, Mark, and Claire, Mike and Mark knew that. Now, Claire didn't know that because I guess Mike and Mark chose not to tell their wives about Aaron's marital situation. And when all this stuff, oh, I, I'm jumping ahead because I haven't told everyone what happened in Los Angeles. Okay. Oh, because you asked me what was the deal with that paragraph. Yes. For the last five years, I've basically been living the life of a bachelor. And to be perfectly honest, I've been somewhat careless about how I go about doing that. Okay. And I've put myself in situations where people can try to embarrass me or humiliate me. I'm so That's glad that I started there because then that would make sense as far as whatever you want to do in your own personal life. Yeah. Right. It is interesting you say that because even as somebody that was giving commentary, the emails, and I'm sure I'm not the only creator that made commentary that might have received emails about Aaron this, Aaron that, and Aaron this. And I'm like, I don't know. And I don't really care because it's not, it's not about him being on this board and helping people and bringing awareness. That is separate. So I'm glad that you clarified that portion of the email for me and everyone That's else. That's right. That's right. My goodness. Now, you know, I, it doesn't bother me when Scientology tries to humiliate me. Uh, well, let's be honest. It does bother me. But I don't feel compelled to do something about it because nobody cares what Scientology says or does. Okay. But when people are supposed to be my friends and when people who know that this is something I'm probably not going to talk about want to publish information about, um, uh, well, uh, through innuendo – Making it seem like I am engaged in uh, what was the word they used? Not misbehavior. It, it, uh, it, it, they said in in May 2023, we received um, uh, a report of Air, yeah Aaron's um, unethical unethical conduct or something complaints something like that. And so then I so that wouldn't be for the board. That would be is that your personal life? Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> people have assumed because these guys keep talking about unethical conduct and because they're kicking me off of a board because of it, people have assumed, is Aaron stealing foundation money? Uh, is, That's is there, what people like, were saying. <laughs> no. So do you want to jump to what happened in Los Angeles? Yes. But let me just ask one more question. So, uh, so yeah. that I understand this, you have a board with made up of wives and husbands, all survivors of what happened in Scientology. You don't have your wife on this board, correct? Correct. Okay. I just wanted to understand, all right, where the misconduct and everything came about. Now, to but... be, so, so back in the day when Luis Garcia called me with the idea to start the Aftermath Foundation, he's the one who asked me, who should we add to the board? And I said, Mike, Mark, Christy, and Claire, because they're close okay. friends. Like in my mind, there's only one thing that really qualifies you to be on a board of any nonprofit that's helping people leave Scientology. You have to be completely impervious to fair game tactics. There has to be nothing. And I don't mean you can't have any skeletons in the closet. I mean, you cannot care if Scientology. Oh, okay. Yes. When I say impervious, you cannot be someone who will cave to fair game tactics. Because if you are, you have no business being anywhere near the foundation board. Period. Okay. That, would make that is – um. And to be honest, when we put the board together, there was zero consideration for um, representation, uh, diversity, or uh, lack of conflict of interest. Uh, I don't, conflict of interest is not the right word, but nobody cared about married couples because it was all a formality. Oh, the right. other, the, the other um, requirement to be on the board is we said, this is a group of people who can never be taken down through fair game tactics and could never be turned against each other. How wrong was I? Literally, that was the theory for why we put this group of people together. And I've even said so much when we were doing our SPTV chats together. We could never be turned against each other. Mm -hmm. 
and we could never be fair gamed. No one gives a shit whether everyone's voting as a group. To be honest, everyone on that board, except for Claire, said, I'll join the board as long as I don't have to do anything. And we said, that's fine. We don't want you to do anything. Me and Luis are going to do all the work. Claire, Claire was the bookkeeper, the treasurer from the very beginning. So even from the very beginning, Claire was doing something. But operationally speaking, Luis and I did absolutely everything for like the first four years. Social media, emails, phone calls, absolutely everything. So mm -hmm. we didn't care about the board diversity representation. They were only there to vote yes or no whenever we needed someone, whenever we needed to approve a, a disbursement of money. That's what gotcha. they were there for, right? Gotcha. And it was cute. It was like, oh, look, we'll have a nice presented front. Everyone knows these people. Oh, I, at that time, oh, everyone was from the first season of the Aftermath Foundation, uh, of the Aftermath show, uh, Scientology in the Aftermath. So um, Mike, Christy, Mark, Claire, me, and I can't remember if Luis was season one or season two, but I, I think he was season one. Everyone was from the first season of the Aftermath Foundation, and everyone was good friends. Uh, mm. particularly with, with Mike, like, um, the people who were in the first season of the aftermath show is people who were Mike's friends. That was just, just the nature of the beast because they're putting a TV show together. They have to have all these stories. Mike is a co-host of the show. What's the lowest hanging fruit. Let's bring the people on the show who Mike already knows. And he already knows their stories. That was even right. more important. He already knows their stories. Right. And so, um, did I get off track there? Oh, the board. No, you didn't. It, no one cared that there were married couples on the board. It wasn't okay. even, it wasn't even a It thing. wasn't even a thought, correct? No, no okay. it wasn't even a thought. And you know, those bylaws where it said, uh, what are the traditional spiritual values? Um, Luis told me just a few days ago, he's like, I just copied and pasted that from another organization so that we would have something like it didn't matter what was in those bylaws. <laughs> like, okay. Because I said, those why bylaws, is that in there? <laughs> <laughs> those bylaws were not adopted for any reason other than there had to be bylaws. Like, it, no, <laughs> it's one of these me. things where it's one of these things where if you want to get rid of someone, go ahead and point to the bylaws. But nobody, it, it didn't, it wasn't a thing. Nobody cared what was in the bylaws. We just had to have something to create the organization. We weren't, we didn't create this organization with the idea that we had to protect it from us or we had to protect ourselves from each other. None of that came into play. Oh man. So then there's this, out of all the bylaws, they pointed to that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sure when they finally got to a point where they're like, shit, we got to get rid of Aaron, but we have to have some official way to do it. They're like, well, there must be something in our bylaws about being a terrible person. Uh, let's let's look them up. And it's like, oh, well, there's something. <laughs> I cannot. See? All right. Well, yeah. Let's talk about L.A. Are you ready? OK, good. Here's the long and the short of it. Um, uh, there's a girl who showed up to court. I basically, there's this girl I hooked up with in LA. She spent a few nights with me. Okay. okay. The third, the third night she spent with me by the morning, uh, like when she, she would not let me sleep. Okay. Now I already knew that before previously, but, um, by the way, it wasn't three consecutive nights. I was probably in LA for about a month. Um, I'd have to look at the, it, it wasn't three consecutive nights. It was just three different nights. Okay. <clears throat> the last, the last morning I was like, I have to sleep. Like, can you please stop talking? I, I don't know what's wrong. She just had this thing. She doesn't stop talking. And I don't mean that in some funny cliche way. I mean, whatever is going on with her, she has this constant monologue. Okay. I said, I, ha I have to get some sleep, please. Can you please just let me, please stop talking so I can sleep. Um, and she wouldn't. And I said, please, if I, I have to be in court in like three hours, if I, if you're not going to let me sleep, can you please just leave? Like, I just need, what was the leave. time frame that this happened? I'm kind of curious. This is maybe 6 AM, but at no, this I point, mean, like how long ago did this happen? This was May 18th. Okay. I just, okay. Giving some time reference. May 18th. I believe the jury was still in deliberations. I can't recall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The jury was still deliberating at this time. Um, and I just, uh, please, I, I have to sleep. Can you please leave now? Instead of just leaving, um, she decided to trash the hotel room and assault me physically and try to, um, uh, destroy the place. And, um, at one point, I can't remember if it was before she started trying to break things or after she sat on my my chest 
and oh said, God. well, if I'm never going to see you again, then obviously one of us has to die. And so it must be you. And she started to try and choke me. Oh my God. Now she's a small person. Okay. Meaning, I mean, she's a grown person, but she's, I, I'm 220 pounds. I mean, she's probably 110 soaking wet. So I'm not in physical, at no point did I feel like I was in some kind of physical danger. What was going through my head though is I wasn't staying in a, in a, a hotel per se. I was staying in a private club as a guest of another former Scientologist. Okay. And I'm very aware at that time that yes, I might morally and privately be able to have relationships with whoever I want to, but the world who knows me just parasocially sees me as a normal married guy. And Scientology certainly takes advantage of the fact that the world sees me that way, which is why they think they can try to humiliate me on the website by uh, characterizing me as just a philanderer. Right. And I'm in LA covering a rape trial. And I said to myself in my mind, if the police show up to this hotel with a half dressed woman in my hotel room, yes, involved in some sort of a physical altercation, yeah, my life is over. Yes, I cannot survive that. And so What's going through my mind here is how am I going to get the two of us out of this building without someone calling the police? And at the same time, what's going on there, the, uh, simultaneously, the thought is, I cannot call anyone for help. I can't ask for help. This, this is on, I have to, I have to figure this out. I can't call the police. I can't call the police and be like, there's someone in my hotel room who's destroying the place. Like the last thing I can have happen here is for the police to show up. This is the LAPD. So, yeah. and we know the connection between LAPD and Scientology and okay. Okay. And also I'm a big guy. No yes. one's going to believe that some tiny little woman is abusing this big guy. Yes. <clears throat> Okay. So, and, and also what I'm thinking is this will thoroughly humiliate my wife who most people in her life don't even know about our marital status. Absolutely. Okay. She starts throwing. Th okay. So she grabs my neck. Cause I know people are going to think, Oh, did you hit her in self-defense? I never laid a finger on this girl, not a finger. If only out of sheer terror that if I did and something happened, the police would show up and I'm going to fucking jail. Yes. Okay. Because she's so small, like when she has her arms around my neck, I'm just grabbing her wrists and I'm trying to de-escalate. I'm trying to be like, oh, God, just please stop. Calm down. Please calm down. Okay. Okay. The de-escalation and diplomacy skills that I brought to bear in this situation would solve the Middle East conflict. Okay. Oh, okay. She's throwing water. She's throwing food. She's hitting me in the face and head. She's trying to break my lights. She's picked up my whole computer to try to throw it. I grabbed her. I, okay. Okay. Oh. She grabs my microphone, which isn't on one of these stands. It's on one of the heavy metal stands because I was in the hotel, right? Uh-huh. You know, these things are like, a, what, a fucking 10-pound metal mic stand. She right. She throws the mic on the floor. Oh. Okay. Now, I, at this point, am just trying to calm her down, calm her down, calm her down. But I have no idea how I'm getting us out of this hotel room. Okay. It just so happens... <laughs> that I, I look down at my, I real, I look down at my foot and my big toe is sliced wide open and bleeding like fucking crazy. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now feet 
feet bleed really bad. Okay. I've never had a cut like that on my foot and I couldn't see the cut. I could just see blood all over my foot. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm panicking at this point. Cause I don't know if my, like, t I don't know what's going on with my toe. Okay. Yeah. So I go to the bathroom and I put my foot in the bathtub thinking, okay, the blood will just rinse off. And it's just bleeding like a son of a bitch. And now the, the blood is full of, the tub is full of like blood water. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Now, if someone shows up, <laughs> no one knows <laughs> whose blood is in the bathtub. Absolutely. And I'm like, and my toe won't stop bleeding. And I'm freaking out. Like, I, I can't stand the sight of blood. But then it occurs to me that this is, this is the only way I have to get her to leave the hotel room is to beg her to help me go to the ER to get my toe fixed. Oh, man. Okay. Now, as after my toe is already cut wide open and bleeding, and I don't know how bad the damage is, and I'm begging her, please get dressed and help me get to the ER. She pulls out her cell phone and starts to record me. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to survive this. And um, so I reach towards her phone and I just say, I don't want to be recorded. I don't want to be recorded. She turns around so that her back is to me and she puts the camera facing us. And I'm, st and so, so now I'm like reaching over her shoulder. Like, I don't want to be recorded. I don't want to be recorded. I'm reaching for the phone. Cause I'm like, the last thing I need is a goddamn video of this. Okay. Okay. And I'm reaching over her shoulder. I said, I don't want to be recorded. I don't want to be recorded. And she's saying, it's for me. It's for me. I grab the phone and she goes full beast mode. So I oh drop the phone. So I drop the phone. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to de-escalate. Okay. But by grabbing the phone, like shit was about to get very, very real. So I dropped the phone and my understanding, what I believed to be the case was that I couldn't remember if the phone was facing up or facing down, but I believe that it was still recording because I don't believe anyone managed to hit the record button again. I believe that that phone was still recording on the on the floor. Oh. And I said, okay, well, the best I can do is just continue to beg her to help me go to the, the ER. And, um, and that's what I did. Now, subsequent, and I'll tell you what happened next, but subsequent to this, what, what she did was to take like a th three seconds uh -oh. of other um, from behind her and reaching for the phone and saying, I don't want to be recorded. Okay. And she sort of took the sound off of the video and looped it so that it just looks like we're having some sort of a physical confrontation. And there's no context. So nobody knows what the hell's happening. But it looks like me and it looks like a girl and it looks like something unfriendly is going on. And it just looks like a physical confrontation. Um, and I guess to the extent that I'm trying to grab her phone, it's, uh, you know, it's a confrontation. Okay. It still takes me about a half hour to get her to agree to leave with me and try to go to the ER and come downstairs and let's leave together. Okay. Even as we're walking down the hallway to the elevator, she's shouting and she's hooting and hollering. And the more I tell her to please, people are sleeping. Please, people are sleeping. You know, she's threatening to go back to the hotel room. And I'm like, I, I cannot leave you here. I, I need to go to get my toe fixed. I need you to come with me. Right. Eventually, I, we go down the elevator. We go through reception. We get out of the building. Now, I didn't really want to go to the ER because I'm not a guy who goes to doctors, really. But And also, I don't need a $10,000 ER bill. But I said, okay, before – I said, let's go to the CVS. The CVS is about three blocks down. This is downtown LA, maybe 7th. I got to look it up. I want to say 7th and Broadway, but 7th and something. We are talking downtown Los Angeles. We are talking downtown Los Angeles, Thursday morning, maybe 6 37 a.m at this point the sun is up the city is in motion like we are this is not the middle of the night this is not in the middle of nowhere we are in downtown la the city is awake people are on the sidewalks we're in the full view of everyone cameras people okay real life 
Wow. I go, okay, come with me to CVS. I'm going to get some first aid stuff. I'm going to get some gauze, some Neosporin and some tape. And uh, uh, I, I put three socks on my foot because it's bleeding like crazy still. I'm putting three socks on my foot and I'm, you know, limping to the CVS. Uh -huh. wow. We get, we get into the CVS. Someone's trying to text me. Let me put on, do not disturb. No worries. Okay. We get into the CVS. She's acting like an absolute maniac. I asked the security guard to please keep her away from me. The security guard's like a 65 year old woman who's like, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Um, okay. I get all the stuff. I go to check out. We go outside of the CVS and I realize I haven't actually gotten rid of her. I need to get rid of her. What? Okay. So I go, look, you're not coming back to the hotel with me. Um, I'm going to call you an Uber. You've got to go home. You've just threatened to kill me a couple times. You yeah. literally assaulted me and cut me wide open. Uh, you've tried to destroy the hotel room. Yeah. You're not coming back with me. Give me your address. I'm calling you an Uber. She gives me the address. I call the Uber. <clears throat> it takes about 10 minutes for the Uber to get there. As we're waiting for the Uber, she's, oh my, am I really never going to see you again? Please. I got, I've got my arm out. I'm like, stay away from me. Do not, you, you do not come near me. You stay away from me. I'm asking people you know, cause, cause the, the, the city's open, like businesses are open, you know, out, out on the streets of LA, you'll have people standing outside the businesses, you know, sometimes like, uh, uh I don't know for <laughs> there's people I'm like, can you please come here and keep this person away from me? And they're like, we can't get involved. I'm wow. Like, oh my goodness. Okay. She goes, Oh, am I really never going to see you again? Am I really never going to see you again? Um, please, I just want one more, one last kiss, one last hug. I, I, is this really the last time I'm going to see you again? And I'm just like, stay away, stay away, stay away. As the Uber is pulling up, she goes, just give me one last kiss. And she jumps on me and puts her arms around my neck. Like, I, if I recall correctly, she's sort of behind me here, right? Okay. But she's got her arms wrapped around my neck. She's basically hanging off of me. Okay. I grab her wrist. And I go like this to get her off of me. And, and she, she pulls like one of these LeBron James flops. Uh-oh. Did we freeze? Are we good? Can you see me? Yeah, your did internet's going in and out. I can see you, Aaron. Can you see me? Okay. I can, can see you. It just okay. looked like I was glitching for a bit. You were okay. glitching for a minute. So all I okay. So all I did was pull. I mean, she's a small person. So she has small wrist. So, and, and probably wasn't, it was probably made worse by the fact that she probably was not supporting all of her weight on her own feet. Cause she's kind of hanging from me. Okay. Right. Right. So I, so I grab her wrist and I pull it off of my neck and she does, Oh, and falls into the building. That's that we're standing next to, which was the CVS that we were just in. Oh my now, this goodness. is one of those, old, you know, downtown L.A. buildings, like everything's like sharp edges and marble or granite or whatever. And she falls and she stump she stumbles and she falls into the building. And I see her head hit one of the corners of this building. Oh, my gosh. OK. And my first thought was, oh, fuck, <laughs> that actually looked pretty bad, um, meaning the impact actually looked pretty bad. And my second thought was, this is my chance to get away. And I start very quickly walking away back to the hotel. Okay. I hear her start screaming my name and I look back and she is up and running after me, screaming my name on the sidewalks of downtown LA on a Thursday morning with the sun shining. And I'm like, I'm in a fucking movie right now. Oh my God. I start running away from this 110 pound girl. I am, I'm sprinting down the streets of Los Angeles away from someone who's pursuing me and screaming my name with a bloody foot. Well, I've got the bloody foot. She apparently, you know, uh, yeah, now would she have a, head. a bloody head. Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, no one's going to believe a word of this. <laughs> No one's going to believe a fucking word of this. This is insane. <sighs> so 
So I get back to the hotel and I get back up to my room. By the time I get there, she's already sending me pictures of the cut on the top of her head. Look what you did to me. And I'm like, wow. Now at the time, I'm still being a little naive about what the fallout of this is going to be. I just block her on everything. I just block her number, block her on Twitter, just everything. She, within hours, she is texting and emailing and Instagram messaging everyone who's ever been on my YouTube channel, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in my Facebook group. Oh, my God. All, all of the Aftermath Foundation board members. Now, the email to the board members was specific. Wait, she her emailed the board members, too? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's, here's what you're going to find amazing. She emailed the board members saying, and this is almost verbatim, Aaron beat the shit out of me in his hotel room with his fists, blood and bruises everywhere. She said, I would never involve the police because I wouldn't want to get Aaron into trouble. All I want is for him to be removed from the board of the Aftermath Foundation. And you go, on its face, it's absurd. On its face, it's absurd. Wait, wait. You're saying he literally just beat you up, but all you want is for him to be removed from the board of the Aftermath Foundation. What? Like, even on its face, that is absurd. And if anybody questions whether that's what the email really said, I will be happy to publish the email. Now, I'm not going to say the girl's full name because I don't want to direct hate towards everyone in Los Angeles with that name. It's a pretty common name. I won't say the whole name. Her first yes. name is Juliana. Her first name is Juliana. Don't hunt down every Juliana in the greater Los Angeles area. But even if I gave you her last name, there's a million people in LA with this name. So I'm just saying her name is Juliana. And if you're in my Facebook group or you're ever on my YouTube channel, uh, you probably got an email or a message from a Juliana uh, claiming that I uh, beat her up. <sighs> now, it didn't occur to me that anybody would actually believe this. And honestly, I just sort of lied to myself that nobody would ever believe this. And so I had nothing to worry about. Um, it turns out Claire Headley believed it. <laughs> and um, to be honest, the other board members said, we don't even care if we believe this. It was actually Mike Rinder who said, I don't actually care if Aaron did this or not. Aaron makes horrible, careless decisions. And if he didn't do this, he'll do something in the, uh, else in the future. And it'll be much worse. And he's going to take us all down with him. And I don't want to be associated with him. I received messages from hundreds of people asking me, hey, what's up? What's going on with these messages I'm getting? What's this photo? And are, what happened? And are you okay? Every single person who messaged me got the entire story from me in full exactly like what I just told you right now. Even the part about my wife, my, uh, the relationship status between me and my wife. I told everyone who asked me the entire story. Do you want to know who never even contacted me for two weeks to ask me, are you okay? What happened? Are you a moron? For two weeks, I did not receive a single text message, phone call, or email from Mark, Claire, or Mike. They instantly were just conspiring on how to get rid of me because I was such a liability. Um, and Luis Garcia, who was the president and is a dear, dear friend of mine, Aww. is the one who was in touch with me and was serving as a liaison because none of the other people cared at all to talk to me about it at all. But he wasn't on the board anymore. So why would they just No, he was. He was still on the board. Okay, he was still on the board. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Now, to me, when people have had to point out to me that people have said to me recently, like, you know, even in the videos where you've sort of alluded to this, you still are sort of painting yourself as someone who's done a lot of bad things over the last five years. And the truth is, you didn't do anything wrong. You are the victim of a crime. And uh, someone pointed out to me recently, 
if you exhibited bad judgment by hooking up with the wrong person, there's only one victim of that bad decision. And it was you. Mark and Claire and Mike are not a victim of you being assaulted by a crazy girl in LA. They're not victimized in this situation. The Aftermath Foundation is not victimized in this situation. Right. You were victimized and then essentially blackmailed. And the people who were supposed to be your friends made you out to be the bad guy in this situation. Now, someone might go, hey, look, this is just really careless behavior for someone on the board of a nonprofit foundation. Guys, uh, you can target. have Someone can You're have your opinion about that, but it's like the foundation is just a vehicle to raise money and spend money. It's not an entity that exists to, to, to serve as an example of the right way to live or how to, how to live by traditional spiritual values or, um, how to properly, uh, you know, how to, pro it's not some big moralizing thing. Right. And it's like, did I commit a crime there? There's no crime that's committed there. And it and it has nothing to do with the Aftermath Foundation other than the fact that Mark and Claire and Mike are embarrassed to be associated with someone who is doing and saying things and getting involved in situations that they find embarrassing. Right. That's all that happened in L.A., now, I've seen some people speculate of, oh, my God, you really got out of town quickly after that. <laughs> this incident happened on Thursday morning. I didn't leave L.A. until Saturday afternoon. If I had just beaten the snot out of some poor girl and was afraid that the police would come knocking on my door, I could have gone right to the airport and left town. <laughs> right. I was already planning on leaving L.A. on Saturday if the jury had not come back with a verdict. The Jane Doe's themselves said, if the jury's not back by Friday, don't bother staying. It was costing me no less than $400 a day to stay in L.A. waiting for the jury to come back with a verdict. Not only had they not come back with a verdict by the end of that Friday, but it was a long weekend. There was no court the following Monday. So I would have been staying in L.A., uh, for no, even the Jane Doe's did not think that after, after that Friday, the Jane Doe's did not think that jury was going to come back with a guilty verdict. And they said, don't bother. Cause you you realize I was only in LA for them. They're the ones who asked me to go. They're the ones who asked me to be there. That's why I was there. So when they said, listen, you don't, if it's not done by Friday, don't, it's okay. You can go home. That's why I went home <laughs> and the jury oh, deliberated wow. for like another week. So thank God I did go home. <laughs> Aaron, how are you feeling right now? Now that you've kind of, I'm feeling surprisingly I'm good. That. Okay. I'm feeling Can surprisingly I ask you a good. I got to ask you some questions though. Please, please do. Um, There's no police report. This girl never went to the police. Good. That was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this has been over. She's, been messaging people and people this is a theme that i'm seeing in the chat every other question is is this a setup it's a setup it's a setup i where do you land with that i don't think it's a setup okay okay other people who are more expert in this subject than me have said you have to be the stupidest person on earth to not think this was a setup and I go, look, I'm not someone who just goes for the low hanging, the low hanging fruit, easy explanation. Oh, it's Osa. I don't blame hardly anything on Osa. Um, this girl came to the courthouse. She showed up. Uh, she emailed me. She offered to take me out and show me around. Um, you know, she pursued me. So people go, oh, it's, it's such, it's such a setup. Um, you know, even, you know, when I spoke to Lee Remini about this, she said, was this that crazy girl from court? I said, yeah. She goes, this is that crazy <laughs> girl who, who, this is that crazy girl who came up to me and, and wouldn't like leave me alone or shut up. I was like, yeah. She goes, oh, how could you be so stupid? <laughs> oh, Leah called it. Shout out to Leah. Leah called it. Oh and my I said, God. Well, I'm sorry, Leah. I didn't just have a line of people outside of my hotel room. And she's like, you're a moron. <laughs> she goes, this was obviously Osa. 
And I said, look, I understand what you're saying. I just, you know, I don't think that she was, because here's the thing, Scientology hasn't done anything with this. Even the video that was circulating on Twitter and uh, TikTok or whatever, the video that I mentioned of like me saying, I don't want to be recorded. Scientology didn't put it on my website. Um, uh, I, uh, I believe she's just an unhinged, unstable, uh, mentally ill person. And you go, oh, oh my God, she was institutionalized after this. She was institutionalized more than once before this. Now that makes me sound horrible. Like what, what, uh, I'm guilty of no, making bad decisions. I'm guilty right. of making bad decisions. I'm the one who's the victim of my own bad decisions. I can understand if the other people are like, dude, you embarrass us. We we're sick of people thinking of you in the same thought as us. I, I don't blame them for feeling that way. What I blame them for is making it an aftermath foundation problem. Because you know who doesn't give a shit about anything I've just told you? The people who support the Aftermath the Foundation, foundation don't give a shit about any of the personal drama I've just explained. And that's why in, in the meeting that we had where they voted me off, I said specifically to Mike, I said, Mike, the fact that you don't want to be associated with me is is your problem. It's not the Aftermath Foundation's problem. And you you're the one drawing a line in the sand here of saying it's either Aaron or me, either he goes or I go. I go, you could just step down. I'm the one who raises the most money for this foundation. I'm the one who has historically done more work for this foundation than any of the rest of you board members. I said, Mike, operationally, you haven't done a thing for the Aftermath Foundation and you've raised less money than anyone else on this board practically. I said, you could just step down. And he said, you're absolutely right. So if the vote doesn't go my way, I'll step down. But I said, yeah, but you're the one making it him or me. You could just step down, but he wanted to make it uh, a him or me situation. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, don't, I know people that be like, oh my God, you shouldn't um, uh, uh, expect for the good of the community, for the good of what fucking community? Like the former Scientology is not a community. It's just a bunch of people with a shared experience. Some people do more than other people as far as speaking out. Uh, some people do more to help people who are leaving. Some people just want to move on. Like we are the community. So right. I'm supposed to shut up and I'm supposed to not say this or that to protect, to protect who? To protect exactly. what? I can start another foundation and raise just as much money for that foundation as I can raise for the Aftermath Foundation. It's not like, oh my God, you're destroying the movement. You're setting us back. What are you talking about? We are collectively the movement. And, you know, I, I, one has to wonder how they thought they were. And, and honestly, I, I, I'm hoping that people are shocked to discover that what they got rid of me for wasn't something that I did. It was something that was done to me. It was something that was done to me. We are supposed to be impervious to fair game tactics. Mike Rinder, more than anyone, should understand that what happened to me, even though I don't believe it was a Nosa fair game tactic, could have been. Okay. And I'm like, we're supposed to be impervious to fair gaming. Like the, the board members could have been like, yeah, Aaron fucked up again. We're all imperfect. And, but, but, but see, but they choose, in my opinion, they choose to characterize it like I'm out philandering and cheating and getting myself into trouble. And, and, and the this only part about that to anybody, this exactly. can happen to anybody though. Right? Like anybody can step out of there. Anybody, anybody. Yeah. And so, so when you look at that paragraph <laughs> in, that was an email that I, where I was like, oh, I'm so sorry for the reckless behavior over the last five years. That was an email I was having to send to basically beg their forgiveness and their grace that I know how my behavior has put them and the foundation at risk. Even though I was having to say that to hope that they would keep me on the board. And that's the email they chose to publish to prove that even I knew what a problem I was. And that's exactly what Scientology does to people. There's something in Scientology called the lower ethics conditions. And when you're doing the liability condition, you have to write something out where you're um, requesting permission from the group to rejoin 
the group as a good member. And as a part of this request, you have to acknowledge everything that you've done that's All bad. And you've, doing. you've seen the error of your ways and you're really talking badly about yourself. Okay. Those liability conditions is what Scientology publishes in depositions to make it look like you've already admitted what a criminal you are. And you go, yeah, but that's what, you, yeah, but that's what you had to say about yourself in order to get the group members to accept you back as a member. That's, that's the accepted practice. And that's essentially what I was having to do to them to beg for them to keep me on the board. And that's the email that they chose to publish to make me look bad. So I, even, so even yeah. if, uh, was anyone ever able to pull up that letter to see what language they used? We were alerted to misconduct. I think they said we were alerted to misconduct, um, of, by Aaron on May 18th. Now they might've said they were alerted on May 19th, by the way, instead of reaching out to me and being like, Aaron, are you okay? Mark Headley told me it ruined his birthday to get that email from Juliana, mm -hmm. uh, with the accusations against me. It ruined his entire birthday weekend. I go, what? It kind of ruined, <laughs> it kind of ruined my weekend as well, you know, but thanks. Thanks for, thanks for the care for a friend. You guys didn't even want to know what the fuck happened. And they didn't for two weeks. I didn't hear from any of them. I got the, the message. I can't remember which paragraph it was, but uh, <laughs> over the next few days, the board discussed this matter and what to do, including reviewing his history of incidences of misconduct. That's the word that had been brought to the attention of the board members previously. Yes. Two of these include law enforcement involvement. The board considered asking Aaron to voluntarily resign. So even though we might not be going chronologically here, let me, let me offer some additional information. Mm -hmm. The pol when they said police involvement, that does not in any way refer to Los Angeles. Okay. Okay. So, um, when I was, um, running for city council, uh, two years ago, uh, I, did I was hear at about my, that. I was at my favorite hangout on the on Clearwater Beach Cigar Fusion Fusion Cigar Lounge. Probably went there three four days a week for years, and um, everyone there was helping me get signatures. And um, I won't be too long winded about this. It has a, 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 a Scientologist I knew, Sky Daly, uh, came into the bar with her boyfriend, who I'd never met before, but I embraced. Big hug. Everyone's friendly. Everything's happening. Um, so uh, I don't want to be too long-winded about this because I've actually done a video about this, but here's what happened. You have. Sky and her boyfriend were at the far end of the bar. I was at this end of the bar and there was a, a stranger next to me. And, and I, I was, you know, I was drinking beers. Okay. Uh, I'm a loud talker even when I'm not having any beers in me. <laughs> when I get some beers in me, I'm, I'm even, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, um, yeah, I, I'm a loud person. Okay. Long story short, the guy next to me, kept going on about how hot sky was. And I was making a, a joke about the hot, crazy matrix. Yeah. You know, you've seen the meme, the hot, crazy matrix, right? On YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I'm like, well, you know what they say? <laughs> She's high, you know, She's crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, is that a tasteless joke? Yeah. That's my humor. I, I, that, that is where I live. Hu uh, that's my, that's where I live. Comedy wise. I make tasteless. Right. jokes. Well, but I wasn't talking to sky. I didn't know they could hear me. And what happened is her boyfriend came over and I was, you know, facing forward and he put his hands on me and basically said, if you call my girlfriend crazy again, I'm going to fucking beat you up or whatever. And he's he said something like, you can either just sit there and, and shut up or you can stand up and we can take this outside or whatever. Um, wow. Now I, I'm a big guy. I'm a loud guy. I do not fight. I've never thrown a punch in my life. I, honestly, um, maybe at my brother. <laughs> Okay. I do not fight. Okay. Do you bodybuild? I'm kind of curious. Like you said, you're a pretty muscular guy. Are you like a bodybuilding? Uh, well, bodybuilding is a specific thing. I work out. I've worked out uh, very work out. regularly since I was 15. Okay. Okay. And so look, I turn around, I stand up. Next thing I know, we're on the ground. I mean, the guy just sucked. Wow. Okay. Now, so what happened? Um, now, again, I, I, feel, I want to be careful because I realize every story I tell, it sounds like I'm just the victim of the story. I don't mean to paint myself that way. You, I, I can take responsibility for any part of this. I can take responsibility for drinking while I'm trying to campaign. I can take responsibility for calling her crazy. But what I didn't do is instigate a fight. Okay. So okay. I stood up. Next thing I know, we're on the ground. Like he's, okay. he, he's hitting me in the head. I'm trying to cover up. I'm trying to hold on to him. 
And when I get up, I see Sky standing there. And I knew that she must have been saying some shit to him to get this guy riled up. Right. Okay. And I called her the C word. I said, you effing C word. Okay. Now it has been misreported in the press because this is what, this is what sky, this is what the guy who attacked me later told the reporter that he punched me because I called his girlfriend a C word. If you think that's what I did, then of course I look horrible in the story. Guys, right. This is my favorite hangout. I've been going to this hangout for years. I'm it's mm. my first day running for Clearwater City Council. Anyone thinks I'm just going to show up and start calling women the C word? So and so I, actually it's, it's it's even been misreported um while well, in certain social media spaces that I hit on her at the bar. She rebuffed me. I called her the C word and the boyfriend decked me to defend her. That is actually how this incident has of been evolved and twisted in various spaces. And of course that just makes me look horrible. But the only thing about this entire story that I felt nervous or defensive about was it looks like I'm just cheating on my wife. It's the, we were, this was well past the point that my wife and I had this conversation. Oh, 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 because what happened is so, af, okay. So after the guy attacks me, he runs away. I call the police. I call the police to report. You're the one that called the police. That's right. I see Sky running. I see Sky walking down the sidewalk. I run up to Sky. I still have this video. And if you want me to send you the video afterwards, just for the hell of it, I will. Okay. I I start recording and I go up to Sky. Hey, Sky, I see your boyfriend ran away. Uh, The police are on their way. Anything you'd like to say before the police show up? Is there anything you'd like to say about what just happened? And she goes, you were stalking me. And I go, stalking you? What, what are you talking about? You were stalking wow. me. I said, I said, cause I sent you some messages on Facebook a year ago. She goes, it doesn't matter how long ago that it was. Okay. So at first I thought she was just purely making something up, just pure fantasy. I thought she was just making something up. Okay. So then when the police showed up and I told them exactly what happened, she was, uh, they asked me, was there, is there anything else that they said? I go, oh, she said something about me stalking her. Like I'm the one who said that to the police. She said, yeah, they go, is there anything else that she said? I go, yeah, she said something about me stalking her. And it was like, were you stalking her? I go, I, I sent her some messages on Facebook like a year ago. I'm so, I, And I was like, uh, sorry, she's really fucking hot. Okay. That's horrible if you think I'm just a married man philandering on uh, cheating on my wife. It's pretty normal behavior if I'm just living the life of uh, – Uh, of a bachelor or whatever. Right. Now you might go, well, what the hell happened a year ago? I started to suspect that maybe she was referring to something. So I went back on our Facebook messages. Now, Sky and I, uh, Sky, uh, uh, Sky and I have known of each other for many, many years. And because I kept going to this bar, uh, I I would hang out at this place at the beach all the time. We kept running into each other. And at one point she had called me and was like, Hey, so what's your story? What's the deal? What's the situation? Okay. And so, one time I was at the bar and I messaged her. I said, Hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Come, why don't you come on out? Now to me, I'm in your neighborhood means I'm at the beach. I've, I always thought sky lived on the beach because that's the, whenever I would run into sky, it would be at the beach. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, hey, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Come on out. And she messaged me back. Now you have to realize at the time that I sent her that message, I was probably, I was probably already drunk texting her at this point from, from the cigar fusion. So I didn't realize the significance of her response when she sent it to me. Wow. Her response was, how do you know where I live? And I was like, I don't know where you live. I mean, I'm at the beach. Me sending her that message going, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Come on out. Made her think I was stalking her. <laughs> and I see. That went right over my head. I didn't know that. I didn't know she thought that of me. So what actually happened was they came into the bar that night. I had no idea that Sky had this in the back of her mind about me. She was over in her boyfriend's ear the whole night telling him that I used to stalk her. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. Now you're like, this is an insane story. And I go, it is. It's crazy. <laughs> and so, but what happened? Okay, so when someone says police involvement, 
and oh, so I'm running for Clearwater City Council. Scientology, and actually, I'm not even sure Scientology is to blame for this one because it could have just been my opponent. Okay. My opponent hears through the grapevine that this altercation happened. Months later, they request the, um, it didn't even occur to me that the, everything I said to the police was being recorded. It did not even occur to me, which is funny though, because in the recordings, they are saying that they're recording it, but you know, um, anyway, they request the police footage of all the officers who showed up to that location at that date and time, and they get all the footage. And the person I'm running against puts all that footage up on a website and sends out postcards with a QR code to the website so every Clearwater voter can see that footage. And I almost won the election anyway, which is incredible to think. Uh, <laughs> in my mind, that incident and that footage is why I lost the election. And, you know, wow. Say la vie. The other incident of the police getting called was like a year earlier. A friend of mine, there's there's a, a city north of Clearwater called Dunedin, Florida, and they have a Mardi Gras parade. And a friend of mine's company had a float in the Mardi Gras parade. And I was on the float, you know, just doing the beads and everything. Anyway, it was my first Mardi Gras. We were wasted out of our minds by the end of that parade. And then we started going bar hopping in Dunedin. And at gotcha. one of the bars, I got rowdy. And I remember the incident, uh, it, just for the sake of brevity, I don't even want to get into the incident. I didn't even aware, I was not even aware until the Tampa Bay Times published it that I was trespassed from that bar. I thought that the manager asked me to leave and I left and there was, it's Mardi Gras. So there's police everywhere. There's just police, it's Mardi Gras. There's police, uh, six cops on every block. Right. I thought that right. what had happened is I got a little rowdy. I was asked to leave. I left outside the bar on the sidewalk. A police, a police officer spoke to me. I gave him my license. I told and him that was what, that. And he said, all right, well, just don't come back. You know, just keep, keep. I didn't even know I had been. I didn't even know there was a record of what occurred there because I didn't. I thought I was asked to leave and I left. OK. Oh, my now, goodness. Wow. The Tampa Bay Times already reported all this. And I've already done videos about both everything I've just told you right now. I've already done videos about that specifically on my channel. OK. Right. And. Uh, and, and I'm being really long winded about this. Those are the only two incidences that they're referring to. That was you've years talked ago. about them before, though. So it's not like you've talked about these incidents. You, you've gone into right. detail with them. That's Do you right. want to so, go ahead? I'm sorry. Well, so for them to bring that up. OK, um, there's another incident. Um, again, I'm going to say three or four years ago where okay. me and some other former Scientologist guy friends took a boys trip to Medellin, Colombia. Now, we can play Family Feud and go, what are the top five answers on the list of what a bunch of guys on a boys trip to Medellin, Colombia are going to get up to? And I guarantee you at least two of those answers are things we got up to in Medellin, Colombia. Um, now, uh, after that, a former Scientologist, uh, who's not a fan of mine, uh, okay. found out through one of his other friends who was on the trip uh, that we were getting up to some shenanigans and this guy just decided to try and humiliate me and, mm. sh and email all the board members and email as many former Scientologists as he could and go, you guys all think Aaron's a big boy scout, but let me tell you what he and his buddies were doing in Colombia. And that's one of one of the earliest times that someone demanded my resignation from the board. So people really do this in the community. They really do yes. say, well, let me tell you, yes. let me, t like, yes. really? But isn't that, I guess I'm just confused because it's like, isn't that what we try to get away from, given that you it's have easy. a whole church that's defaming each and every one that leaves, or, you know, some of you guys, why would you do the same? Now, I, I, can, I can hear <laughs> and I can even appreciate people going, yeah, but you've got a target on your back. And the aftermath yeah, and foundation is right. and the aftermath foundation is under a microscope. And I go, Yeah. And is the example that we're trying to set is that in order to fight Scientology, you have to live like a prince or a princess or a boy. Like, is that our message? Because my message is has tended to be, although I've softened on this in the last six months, my message is bring it on. Like right. this is the internet age. 
being transparent is all that matters. Not being a good little boy. Like if I'm committing a crime, that's fine. If I'm arrested, that's fine. If you just think I'm being uh, immoral, get lost, you know? Um, now look, that's, that's me. That's my, uh, you know, there's probably a little bit of defensiveness there. There's a little bit of, of hubris. There's a little bit of, you know, bring it on. The thing for me that was such a big deal about Los Angeles, that was the first time that I was like, I could have been taken down with this. Yeah. I said, thank God she only accused me of physical assault and not sexual assault. Because if she had accused me of sexual assault, I would not have survived that. Has okay. she come at you legally? Has she said, I'm no. going to nothing? No. It's funny because she's told different stories to different people. To most people, she said, I would never dream of involving the police. I wouldn't want to get Aaron mm -hmm. in trouble. I wouldn't want to get Aaron in trouble legally. I just want him removed from the Aftermath Foundation. To other people, she has said that she did try to go to the police, but they didn't believe her. And I go, it's not the police's job to believe you. Right. Okay? It's not the police's job to believe you. It's their job to take your report. They may not do anything with it. I personally believe that the reason she never went to the police is because she's smart enough to know that it is a crime to file a false police report. A false report, right. Her father is an attorney. So oh. the fact that her father is an attorney and she's never tried to pursue me legally uh, with the police or civilly is like, okay, fine. Now, she it's funny though, because she says, I would never want to involve the LAPD. You know who she did try to involve? The Clearwater PD. Now, mm. uh, shortly, after, shortly after this happened, I did a video um, saying that the Clearwater police called me and they said, look, this is a little awkward, but we have received an anonymous report that you keep your, your wife is locked up in a bunker under your home or behind Wow, your home. what? I did a video about this. Regular <laughs> oh. viewers of my channel will know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. And I said, an anonymous report. Now, now my face went white for a second because I was like, can I clarify something with you? Is this someone who made a report with the LAPD and the LAPD referred it to you guys? Oh, my goodness. And they said, no, this is a, a phone call that came into our anonymous, our, our anonymous reporting line. And I said, well, is it really anonymous? And they said, no. I said, well, is her name Juliana? And they said, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and she goes, uh, they said, and they said, well, I'm glad that you referenced that you knew this person. And I mentioned Los Angeles. I said, was it a Juliana from Los Angeles? And they said, well, now that you mention it, uh, she did say that you beat her up outside of a CVS in Los Angeles. Is there any truth to that? Oh my and I was God. and I was just like, yeah, no, there's no truth to that. And they're like, I'm like, would you like to come out and uh, check my house for a bunker and make sure that my, my wife is okay? And they're like, no, don't worry about it. It gets better. It gets better. Oh my goodness. It gets better. I <laughs> when you say I got, it gets better, I'm just like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I got a phone call from the owner of a local restaurant called the Sunset Grill. And this is someone I've, I don't know this person. I've never heard from this person. Okay. And they said, um, look, this is a little awkward, uh, but we keep, we keep getting a phone call from this girl, Juliana in Los Angeles who says, if a bald man with a beard named Aaron comes in asking for a French dip sandwich, don't serve him because he's an attempted murderer. What? I, sw I have the, e I'll show you e anything you want to see to back up what I'm saying to you. I'll send to you after this afterwards. I, I mean, Aaron, you know, God. you know, people are going to be wanting to interview this girl. So you, might, I'm just like, well, you might have she's, you've already, she's not, she's not trying to be interviewed. I mean, she's already, she, look, she, even today, she jumps into the live chats of SPTV streams, trying to call me an abuser and a womanizer and this, she's out there. She actually has refused to go public. She's refused to go on people's channels. She's refused. I mean, you can find her. I'll send you the link to her TikTok channel. She even, okay, even last week, even last week, she put up a TikTok saying, I finally have more followers on TikTok than my abuser. Wow. And my, and my abuser just got fired today. And I'm like, um, I'm not sure that's how someone would be speaking about someone who was actually their abuser. <laughs> you have more TikTok followers than me. Like, what, what, 
What? That, yeah, that wouldn't be a normal reaction. What's like? Yeah. I, I I guess I don't know. Oh my gosh, Aaron, we have to read these super chats because please, they are. Please, please, please. We have please to give you one second. Sorry, I had somebody come in my door. So you have, um, and some of these, of course, are your supporters. So thank you so much. I mean, they're here wanting to root for you. But you have Channel 727. Hello, Miss Rabbit. Aaron, thank you for the clarification. AA will always support you. You can take the uh, Scientology out of Scientology, but you can't take the Scientology out of them, I guess. So sad on them. We are always with you. And that is by Channel 727. And then you have um, Parallel. I want to party with the Ron one day. With a Ron Ron. A, a Ron one day. Can I comment on something? Yes, please. I, I have seen some people speculating that I have some sort of a substance abuse problem or a cocaine problem. I have, in my, <laughs> I have in my entire life tried cocaine twice. Um, I'm guessing if I had to estimate that the first time was about seven years ago. Um, a friend of mine up in Palm Harbor, uh, we were out at a bar. We ran into one of his friends at a bar who's like, Hey, you want to come back to my place and try a little something? And I was like, oh, no one's ever offered me that before. Yes. Please. Oh my God. <laughs> because yeah, look, I grew up in Scientology. I don't, I've not, I don't have a history of trying substances, but in right. the movies, in the movies, it looks incredible. Okay. Yes. Uh, so we go over to this guy's house. I try some. 20 minutes later, I'm barfing my guts out. <laughs> and I thought, this is nothing like the movies. This was horrible. Okay. Oh and goodness. I and I was like, okay, that's I guess that's I guess that's not gonna uh be it uh, something I, I'm gonna do. Okay, so then <laughs> then comes the trip to C Columbia, and I'm like, well, this has got to be the place to try the good stuff, right? <laughs> okay, not Columbia. <laughs> Medellin, not just Colombia, Medellin, Colombia. Medellin, okay. yes. Once again, it was horrible. Yeah. Thank God I've never found a substance that makes me feel like what they show in the movies. Because if I did, I could that could be a, pro a problem. I've never uh, like uh, uh, as far as substances go. Uh, I've always said I'd uh, like I've. Uh, I mean, I, I would say I smoke weed, but I don't smoke because I'm a runner. I'm an athlete. I, I and I've never even had a cigarette. Okay. And okay. I have, I have smoked weed, but it kills me. It, it absolutely kills me. Um, I've used, a, a, a t, a, you know, a vape pen, but the right, reason I right. stopped doing that is because it makes me hungry and I eat like 10,000 calories. And eventually I'm like, where did I gain all this weight? So <laughs> and then I, you I work out. I like having edibles because it makes me laugh. And if anyone who watches my channel knows there's nothing I love better than laughing. I was on a trip in LA where we had a friend's giving and had a bunch of edibles. We were laughing so hard. My stomach hurt for three days. And that is my idea of a good time. Wow. So it's like, but I'm not someone who's like, oh no, substance. Oh, well, the only psychedelic I've ever had is mushrooms. Um, and honestly, I'm not someone who enjoys being out of control of my faculty. Of your own body. Gotcha. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I would probably try LSD sometime, but I never have. I would probably try DMT sometime, but I never have. I would like, I, I don't still hold on to this Scientology morality regarding substances. And, and also, I mean, these days, okay. So, so, okay. So when I had that conversation with my wife and I was sort of, uh, I'm living my life as a bachelor. Um, I think you could probably make an argument that for six or 12 months there, there was probably a period where I was going out too much and drinking too much. Um, gotcha. I'm not someone who uh, easily gets in trouble when I'm drinking, but it's probably true that every time I've gotten in trouble, it involved drinking. <laughs> When this situation, I mean, was there alcohol involved? Were you drinking? Was she drinking in this situation? With Juliana? The, the one, yes. There was both alcohol and mushrooms involved. Okay. Is she's, it the, possible? she's the one who, well, yeah, go ahead. I mean, did, is it possible that maybe she took something way too much and yes, it's possible. suddenly she lost it? Okay. It, it's, it, it's possible because I couldn't rule it out. Like, but I it doesn't don't justify know. her ongoing behavior, though. That's the thing that doesn't like it doesn't justify what has happened after the emailing, the harassment, all that other stuff. So I guess well, that's, that's well, that's the part where 
the argument I think becomes stronger about, come on, she's saying that you did this and the only thing she wants is for you to be removed from the foundation. That's an unbelievably specific request. This was obviously a setup. I realized that I seem naive to still think it wasn't a setup. I just don't think it was a setup. I just think there's something wrong with her. I, 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 I'm just not, it's too easy to say it was a setup and I'm not sure that it was. So I don't think I can honestly say that it was. Gotcha. Sandra says, I support all victims, including Aaron. I will uh, support you or donate. I will never support donate to the foundation again. Mm-hmm. I'll save my money for Aaron's new foundation. How do you feel about people? And I, I heard you say it earlier in your channel, like you're in no way trying to tell people not to, you know, you're just telling your side of the situation and the story. I I understand what they're do. I understand why people feel that way. And I'm not even telling people not to feel that way. I do understand why people feel that way. I just want to make it clear that that's not how I'm asking people to feel. So right. the fact is the foundation is inextricably linked to the personalities that are involved with it. Absolutely. So if people are pissed off at the people who are running the foundation, it makes perfect sense that people wouldn't want to continue to support the foundation. And that even becomes more of a reason to create another foundation so that there is a group that they do want to support. Gotcha. Amy says, AA, why'd she want you off the foundation if not a setup? I mean, I completely understand some of the the thought process behind that. Lily said, you shouldn't have to say all this, but I respect the hell out of you for it. And that... Lily, I love that you said that because I kind of felt the same way too, especially when you said in your video, like, I don't have to tell people everything. Yeah. Why did you feel like it was important to talk today? Because everything I feel that I'm holding back, either for shame or privacy reasons, gives someone else power to try and manipulate me and blackmail me for it. I have seen people go, he didn't have to reveal all of this about himself. In order to be fully transparent, I did. In order to explain the five years thing, I did. In order to explain um, the police involvement, I did. And, and the people truth can is, make what they want from it at this that's point, right. right? Like you either that's support right. Aaron or you don't. Me not explaining all of this has allowed very terrible, hateful people to spread very terrible misinformation about me. And that includes a bottom dweller like Chris Shelton. Chris Shelton has been one of the people spreading the most vicious lies about me in the SPTV community, in the former TV community, calling himself the critical thinker at large, knowing damn well he's never even asked me for my side of the story. Chris Shelton sent a letter to the Aftermath Foundation after Juliana contacted him, accusing me of committing actual crimes for which I could be imprisoned and demanding my removal from the Aftermath Foundation. That is what a piece of shit Chris Shelton is. He's never once asked me what happened, but he will go on social media platforms and make statements of fact about me knowing that he's never even tried to get the other side of the story. And I'm just sick of people like Chris being able to capitalize on the fact that I've never wanted to share these details publicly. And if I have to expose myself to a little bit of shame to take the power away, I'm done being manipulated. I'm done being controlled. I'm done being blackmailed. And I realized that I was almost doing it to myself. I was almost giving the power to the other people to control me by being like, but I don't want anyone to know this. And honestly, the I don't want anyone to know this was I don't want to humiliate my wife by talking about all of this. And I just want everyone to know that the only reason I decided to talk about it now is because I this morning told my wife and that for both of our sakes and for our long-term happiness, I truly believe that we need to get a divorce. And again, people are going to go, you don't have to say that. There's no reason for me not to say it. This fake marriage is something my enemies, Scientology and former Scientology, have been able to use to try and humiliate me. And it just occurred to me, that the reasons we were trying to keep it together were simply no longer good reasons. 
there was sort of an aspect of it like if we get divorced, Scientology will have won, okay? And there was another part of it where she basically gave up her family to keep our family together. Okay, there was a point where she could have divorced me and left me and stayed in Scientology and stayed with her family and she would still have her family. And um and I even told her five years ago when we sat down, I said, look, you gave up your family to keep our family together. I'm never going to ask you for a divorce. That's right. how I felt that that's how I felt right. at the time. I said, I I feel like I owe it to you. I want to support you. I want you to you know, to be taken care of. And basically what's occurred to me now is we don't have to stay married in order for those things to be true. Okay. I can still support her. I can still take care of her. We can, uh, we, we've been holding on to this fiction for what seemed like good reasons, but what are in fact no longer good reasons. Our kids are old enough now that they're old enough to understand it's better for mom and dad to be happy and yeah. Like, honestly, uh, even if we, you know, uh, the house I'm in right now is only a, a block away from You've made uh, it work actual so homestead. far. Right. You've made it and work that's so why far. I'm, that's right. And I go, you know, um, and, but also let's say I'm in a relationship with someone. I don't want that person to have to have this stigma of, oh, I'm seeing a married man. Like, yeah. why? What, what's what's the point? What's, what's, not what's fair the benefit of that? And then it's not fair to me to feel like I've got to be sneaking around or else people are going to think I'm just cheating on my wife. That's not fair to me. And in my opinion, Mark, Mike, and Claire knew goddamn well that the stuff they were trying to shame me for is stuff that only looks like unethical behavior if I'm a married man cheating on my wife. And Mark and Mike knew that I wasn't cheating on my wife, and they never told Claire. In fact, when all this stuff in L.A. went down, I told – well, Claire learned for the first time about my open marriage, but she didn't believe me. OK, she didn't believe me. And so she checked. She actually checked with some of our mutual friends to see if it was true that I was in an open marriage. And one of them said, well, Aaron told us about it, but we never heard about it from Heather. Now, Claire took that information and then told all the board members. She said, by the way, I I verified today that Heather's never heard anything about an open marriage. In other words, Claire told the Claire told all the board members that I was lying about being in an open marriage. And I piped in to my, I piped in, I, I was not included in these emails. I found out about all these emails after Louise stepped down and he shared them with me. Okay. I see. I see. And so when I was confront, when I finally confronted Claire about this, I said, Claire, how, I said, Claire, I already know for a fact that you never asked Heather about the open marriage because Heather might not tell anyone about it but she wouldn't lie to you about it. Mm. How did you go about determining that I wasn't in an open marriage? And she goes, well, I asked this person. And I go, and, and that person said, Aaron told us, but Heather never told us. And I go, why would Heather ever tell those people? She, Heather doesn't tell anyone. Why would she tell those people? And how could you take that as confirmation that I was lying? And she said, you're right. I'm terribly, terribly sorry that was wrong of me. And I said, and then I called everyone out and I said, Hey, Hey, Mark, you knew goddamn well about my marital situation. How come you didn't tell Claire when she was acting like it was all a lie? And he goes, I thought you guys got it all sorted out. I go, what do you mean sorted out? Well, I asked you, is it all sorted out? And I'm like, if by sorted out, you meant we no longer fight and we're on good terms. And we, we, you know, we're co-parenting. Like I never told you that we were back together. It was, oh, I was just a misunderstanding, I guess. I thought you oh, said you had it all sorted out. I go, so you let your wife believe that I was lying about being in an open marriage. What a, some friend you are. My goodness. Anyway, this is just some of the, all the behind the scenes stuff. That's well, been. and it's, it goes with Elena's comment. She says a terrible situation for anyone to have to go through. I'm sorry. She says, um, Paula, thank you for becoming a member. Shay says, or shy Aaron, May 19th trip recap. He has a black eye there in the video that I did on that Thursday, or even the Friday afterwards, if you are looking for something, you can tell that I have some marks on my face. You, because you were, so people yeah. saw and you could see. Yeah. And she posted TikTok videos the very next day, close up, not a mark on her, not a mark on her. But she says, 
I beat her up with my fists, blood and bruises everywhere. And that's why I go, thank God she accused me of something that can be disproved. By the way, sure. Jeff Augustine offered to go down to that CVS afterwards and ask for the security footage okay. to, to, to prove this. And I said, yes, please do. And he went down there and they wouldn't get, they wouldn't you give him anything. You need a subpoena for something like that, don't you? Pretty much. Exactly. Exactly. Debbie says, in my humble opinion, I think that they were looking to get rid of you because of your channel being more popular than theirs. They want to rule the SPTV. They wanted you gone. That's what Debbie says. I understand why people feel that way. I don't think that is the truth. I do think that they're getting ready to come out with another big documentary that they think is going to get them a lot of media attention, and they don't want me involved in it. They don't want me to share that. In is that just spotlight. upsetting. That's what I'm I feel. Sorry. That's what I feel. Chico, thank you. Um, my cats ate your socks. <laughs> Read that out. Rabbit, you're awesome. Aaron, I hope this stream has been freeing for you, for getting the entire story out. You are on to better things. Keep your chin up. Has the stream been a little, do you feel a little free? I have been looking forward to doing this, terrified and looking forward okay. to doing this. I literally feel that being open about this thing, no one has ever, anything okay. they can hold over my head and i'm very very Good. glad that we're doing this all right michelle says aaron you did nothing wrong i had an abusive marriage and the craziness that entailed you uh, are so strong my can i goodness. say something else can i say something else yes i just want to paint a picture not as a sob story but as a true to give people a true picture of just how we have been uh, kept this marriage together even though it's not. I'm sorry. I'll get. If my wife knows what happened in Los Angeles, or even that anything happened in Los Angeles, I wouldn't know. She's never said anything to me about it, one way or the other. We've never spoken about it. I didn't tell her anything happened. She didn't tell me that she heard anything happened. We've never spoken about it. There's an understanding there that you guys both have clearly. That you know, you yes. just. I got you. If my wife knows that I've been kicked off of the board of the aftermath foundation. I wouldn't know. It she's never meant she, wow. she's never mentioned. She's never mentioned it to me. She's never said, Hey, I heard what happened. I've never mentioned it to her. If my wife has watched any of the videos that I've done about it so far, she's never mentioned it to me. I'm, 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 I'm saying this to paint a picture of how little we actually talk about things. And, and that's, uh, it, it's a, well, the chicken and the egg problem. Like, right. Uh, it, it, which came first, uh, not talking about things or the separation. <laughs> and, and my point is it's the oh, same. It's, it's, it's an illustration of that. It's not like, Oh my God, the marriage is falling apart. No, no, no. We crossed that bridge five years ago. And, and if there was anything to fall apart, it fell apart much before that. Okay. We just chose that. We wanted to co-parent our kids under the same roof. Um, and, and you've been doing a good job. I mean, it's not yeah. like, it's been right. working, like I said, right? And the board knew, and mm. that's right. Casey Katz, it's Mike Rinder, continues to ruin lives, just like he did when he was in OSA. He dreams of being Captain Davy. What do you think about that comment? This is Casey. Um, um I mean, obviously, Jim that's harsher. Scott? That's that. I, I mean, I wouldn't concur with that statement, but okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell people how they should feel or how they should react. I do feel, oh, there's, there's actually one more, you know, we want to go full transparency. Okay. I want to tell people what actually led to Mike, like this, this, what we've talked about on this video has been an accumulation of things that makes them embarrassed to be associated with me. Okay. But here's what actually led to it. When Graham Barry emailed me threatening to sue me if I didn't take my video about him down. He copied all the board members. Now, he never threatened to sue the board members. He never threatened to sue the Aftermath Foundation. He just wanted the board members to see to how aware. horrible. Yes. Mike Rinder replied all to that email, basically saying, oh, we're so sorry that you have to deal with this bullshit just for clicks and views. In other words, he's talking shit about me to my in front of me, about me in front of me to my face, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, the YouTube out the YouTube algorithm had been uh -huh. serving me up this two this two minute video of Mike Rinder uh, doing a German documentary talking shit about Graham Barry. Yeah, I saw that. We played that a little bit in the channel. I said, this is interesting. I wonder what changed. 
So Mike Rinder in his email, oh, I'm so sorry. Aaron doesn't speak for me. He doesn't speak for the foundation. I very specifically disagree with what he did to you here. I'm sorry you have to put up with this just for clicks and for views. Aaron doesn't speak for the foundation. And I responded all to that email. I said, you're right. I don't speak for the foundation. And neither does Mike. And I included the clip of Mike talking shit about Granberry. No, you didn't. You did? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my, oh now, my, God. you are petty. <laughs> oh my God. It was in response to that, that Mike email, Mike responded saying, I'm going to move to remove you at our next board meeting. Oh my God. And I said, I guess I'll see you at the next board meeting. That's I can't with you. I That's what, what really – when so when I say Mike put his own feelings and his own ego ahead of what was best for the foundation, now, someone can level that against me, except all I've done is explain what really happened. The best thing would have been for no one to do anything I, I, as far as removing me. But you can't remove me and then demand that I not tell people what happened. Oh, my gosh. Well, I appreciate the full – I was not expecting that. That That, that is full – Transparency, Vic, thank you for the 20 memberships. My goodness. Um, Christian says, I donated to the aftermath a few times. Your personal life has not impact on your work. And I don't care. And people have been saying that, that your personal life shouldn't impact whatsoever. T Garden says, did you learn anything from the situation in LA that will make you more discerning in the future? And I think that's a fair question. Absolutely. What do you think? What happened in LA was the first thing I have ever experienced that actually opened my eyes to how susceptible I have made myself to Scientology being able to take me down. It is a miracle that they have not succeeded considering how careless I've been in my personal life the last five right. years. It was an eye-opener which is why I didn't actually mind at the time sending that email to Claire saying, look, this really has opened my eyes. I've become a hermit the last six months. I go to Publix. I go to Costco. I go home. I don't go out anywhere. I don't go out at all. And, um, and the truth is, it really was an eye opener. And that's not just something I have to say to make someone uh, you know, take me back. Never before have, have I, I've always felt, um, what's the word, uh, impervious, uh, invincible. I felt, yes. in, I, I have felt invincible okay. until May, until May 18th. I saw my proverbial life flash before my eyes. Yeah. Um, I already knew by day three, meaning she stayed with me the third night. I already knew she was an unhinged person before then. Oh and my goodness, Aaron. That's what I'm saying. So, so when I'm accused of bad decision making, I can't get defensive about that. Yeah, that's true. I shouldn't be going out drinking on Clearwater Beach. Uh, 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 you know, I, I, okay. I mean, I should be able to hear that. But I'm saying I shouldn't be careless. Um, yes. And 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 that's the thing. From May 18th onward, I have been on my utmost best behavior, except for the Graham Barry video. Now. I st no one has any right to tell me what I can fucking do or say on my YouTube channel that it has nothing to. So I, and I truly did not think that that video was going to be a problem for the aftermath foundation. You have to understand, right. I truly did not know they had adopted this new code of conduct. Okay. And, and, and also, uh, uh, so anyway, the answer to the question is yes, it's actually okay. been the first thing that has ever opened my eyes and made me more discerning, uh, in my decision-making. My goodness. Chico, thank you so much. Um, Ab Dazzle says, Aaron, you're always been my main dude, and I love you, and I'm with you till the end, brother. That's what Ab Dazzle says. Debbie says, Rabbit, you have a new subscriber. Well, shout out and shout out to all the new subscribers. AA Ron, longtime subscriber, but rarely comment, but I will now. I still support you 100 uh, percent Luna Moms says, Aaron, I love you, warts and all. <laughs> She might have been the one that put that comment. Um, oh, it's it a beautiful comment. She says, I watch Rabbit because she supports that surprise witness. Shout out to BJ. I saw her in the chat too. She and 
you are good people. Liz Gale said it perfectly. Um, aftermath, your Scientology is showing. The board lives in an echo chamber. Shame on them. Don't become the thing you hate. I that was the one thing I said. Don't don't do the tactics. When you talk about a, a Shelton and, and all these other people, I'm like, wait a minute, you guys are ex-Scientologists. What are you doing to the people that what are you doing? Yeah. Even if you don't yeah. care for somebody, why would you do that? Yeah. And I'm okay. I got to tell you, one of the things that's, I think, beneficial about if there are disagreements or there's arguments, some people wonder, why did I have that public argument with Mitch Brisker on my channel the other month? I go, you know what? One thing that is good about speaking your mind in public, nobody can misrepresent you. Exactly. Nobody can lie about what you really said. And in the former Scientologist community, the amount of people who will just straight up blatantly lie about what's said in private conversations is mind boggling. And that's why for me, it's almost like a safe, um, it's almost like a safe retreat, ironically, to do things publicly on my channel. Yes. Yes. So that people can't lie or misrepresent about what's actually being said. And that's why um, I'm in, I'm incredibly consistent and open on my channel. It's easy to be consistent when you're being honest, you know? Yes. It's hard. It's hard to, if you're lying, it's hard to remember everything you're lying about. This story doesn't change. It stays the same. Absolutely. That's right. That's My right. goodness. Vic, thank you so much again for gifting. Samantha says, Aaron, come back to Bucks County. We'll be sweet to you there. And she put a little kissy <laughs> face there for you. Shea says, uh, Shay, excuse me. I forgive Mike for the OSA time, but after all that, he is the last person to be the arbiter of moral post Scientology sleep well. Listen, I, wow. Um, shout out to Shay. Allison says, Aaron, so proud of you. This does not make Mike, Claire, and Mark look any better. Mm -hmm. They need to seek help for their culty behavior. Vanderella, I'm a nurse. And so I have to ask, how is your toe? How's your toe? Uh well, it's been May, June, July, August, September, October. It's been over six months. I can finally bend it without pain. I'm positive it was broken. Oh, um, my God. Uh, Did you go to medical afterwards? Like when you got home? Even if it's you actually toe. break your toe, it's a toe. They can't. They don't do it, anything. They can't do anything. I, I've broken my toe before. They don't. I didn't go to the. They don't do anything. You just wait for the fucking thing to heal. You know. My goodness. Um, Mr. Blue yeah. Sky says hugs, Aaron. I just wanted to say, as a never end, that having the former highest ranking former member of a cult in charge of a foundation is extremely bad optics. Take care of yourself. Thank Keyboard you. Keyboard Warrior says crazy girl only wanted Aaron off. AF. It's a setup. That's the second, That's right. third. Uh, Ma'am2229 says it's it could have been a setup by Mike, Mark, and Claire. Not Scientology. It smells like what Mike used to do in the cult. Your kindness is unbelievable. Please know you are supported. Well, thank you. Oh, I realized, I realized that in the first uh, videos that I did on the subject, because I didn't want to yet speak about the details of what happened in LA, I didn't explain what happened as far as them demanding my resignation. And I said, guys, if you demand, if you vote me off right now, yeah, it's going to look to our community. I'm like, this girl's contacted everyone in our community. It's going to look like you think I did this. Yes. Because no one's going to understand why you would get rid of me if you didn't think I did this. But they didn't want you to go public, correct? Yes, correct. And even the attorney, Ray Jeffrey is the attorney, um, uh, a board member. He's a board member and he's the attorney. Right. He said, he said, guys, I don't understand. There's no evidence Aaron did anything. And he certainly hasn't been convicted of so anything. What, what's the deal? And, and even the board, wow. even Ray Jeffrey, the attorney said, and to be perfectly clear, even if Aaron did this, what does this have to do with the Aftermath Foundation? He wasn't in LA on Aftermath Foundation business. This is his personal private life. And right, there's, right. there's not even a police report. It's just someone making an accusation about him. That was the attorney's perspective. And Mark, Mike, and Claire were like, yeah, we we don't want to be associated with him. He makes bad decisions. We don't trust, uh, we don't trust that he won't do. No, Mike said he will do something else in the future. It's not, it's not if he will. 
and it will be worse next time. And he will take us all down with him. Mm, and I'm like, mm, 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 this mm. is from the CO OSA int. Like this is from WDC OSA. Like, uh, so anyway, uh, I think, I think people understand what I'm saying when I go, what it really came down to is it just got to a point where they were embarrassed to be associated with me. And okay. I can't blame them for that. Okay. I can blame them for making it an aftermath foundation problem. Deborah, this is another question that's been asked. Did Leah turn on you set up? Uh, Leah has been supportive of, you've said it before that she. Leah is supportive of both sides. She, okay. she understood their, uh, their perceived need to protect the aftermath foundation. She also understood my upset on, on the friendship level. Okay. Um, uh, Leah really doesn't want to be mentioned or dragged into any of this. I didn't um, think so either. And she's not a board yeah. member. So why would anybody? Yeah. Anyways. She's Leah has nothing to do with the aftermath foundation. So whether she's supportive or not is purely a personal issue and a private issue. She, Absolutely. she wishes we would all get together and keep on with the cause. Oh, well, shout out to Leah. Fat Cats Heaven says, did Mike render avoid being called in the Masterson lawsuit because he was complicit in covering up Masterson's abuse? He must have been involved, Fat Cats. What are your thoughts? My Mike Rinder claims to never have had any knowledge about any of the Danny Masterson rapes, and nobody understands how that could possibly be true, but that's what he claims. <laughs> uh, Aaron, you know I love you, but I can't support the Aftermath Foundation. Not only sketchy behavior, but can't support people whose morals allow them to stab their supposed friends in the back. Big hugs. I totally understand. I totally understand. Uh, Caddy... Caddy did says very uh, Church of Scientology of the four of them. What did you do to bring this on? Sorry, hon. This is what. <laughs> oh, what did you do to pull this in? Uh, is a Scientology concept, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Shay says thank you, Rabbit, for giving a platform. I've heard several. This one rings true. Shame on Mike, Mark, and Claire. How doesn't Mike understand? I think Mike believes that I didn't uh, uh, beat this girl up. I, I, I truly think Mike believes I did not do that. He just okay. thinks I am way too careless for someone who's under uh, such a microscope and has right. such a target on my back. And the truth is, I bought into that. Like, you're right. right. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm bad. It's really been the help of other people who've tried to point out to me like, you're the only victim of your bad decisions. Like you can't, I, I, okay. I'm trying to be fair here. Someone go like, well, it could make the foundation look bad to who, <laughs> to, to who the hundreds of thousands of SPTV viewers who are the ones supporting the foundation. And like you, how can you make, you can only make that argument philosophically. You can't show any evidence. We raised more money than ever. By the way, this happened in May. We've raised more money since May than right, the entire right. six years combined previously. I don't, and I don't understand because it's like you have a church that has a website on you. All of, I'm just like, yeah. Who, who cares? Um, yeah. he wasn't charged. There's no crime. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Matt says, uh, a. a. Ron, did you think you were set up by MMC? Because it sounds like it. Does Leah's in you answered Leah it still has your back, but do you feel like but you were no, set let up me, by MMC? Let me let me I no, there was no setup. There was oh, oh uh, as far as adopting the, the codes of conduct to get me out, yes, that was a pure setup. The thing about saying whose back Leah has, here's the problem. Because it, it sounds like if you're saying Leah has someone's back that she's taking sides against the other side, and that's mm -hmm. not how this works. Leah's friends with all of us. She's yes. sad to see any of this going on. She's sad to see any of this playing out in public. Uh, she doesn't want any of this to be happening. Uh, but I, right. what I'm saying is, Leah hasn't turned on anyone. Leah's not taking okay. sides. Okay, Leah's good supports everyone involved, and she probably. Uh, wishes her name would stop being brought up. <laughs> yeah, and I, this is why I'm like, what? And it was brought up on uh, my chat as well. I said, I don't think that Leah takes, I think she's friends with everybody and wants to keep it that way. Um, yes. And she's not a board member. So why are we bringing her up anyways? Yeah, exactly. Um, a, a. Ron, you, uh, you too, bro. Take it easy. Thanks for the rabbit intro. You rocks too. Snot <laughs> face says, I'm slapping an Aaron face on my mic bobblehead. <laughs> I saw those bobbleheads. Now they're going to make Aaron. <laughs> Teresa says, you don't need judgment. You just need love and understanding. Did Church of Scientology send her? We'll never know. 
Um, for what it's worth, for whatever, for whatever it's worth. I realize I sound like I'm contradicting myself, right? Cause I'm saying that I don't believe it was a setup, but at the same time, the moment that she says, I'm not contacting the police. I just want him removed from the board. I realize how stupid I sound when I I say, I don't think it was a setup. It's just hard for me to accept that it could be a setup, but, um, that's all. I mean, I, I, that's all I can say. And Rhoda asked, does Leah think that um, Mike ABCO behavior is okay? Uh, I'm not speaking. I, I'm not speaking yeah. for Leah. I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking for Leah. Yeah, and I, uh, that's fine. Um, there's now sites chosen pure hate towards Mike, Mark, Claire, Amy, Matt, even Mitch. All of uh, SPTV is fractured. Now what? Well, if Mitch doesn't want to get hate from the SPTV viewers, he should stop shitting on me publicly in people's live streams. So, you know, Mitch can make his bed and lie in it. Here's the thing. Can we go back to the earlier one? Yes, uh, Lynn. So here's the thing. SPTV is not the Aftermath Foundation. So uh, SPTV uh, is it's just a, a movement of people. It's just right. people, former Scientologists speaking out on okay. YouTube. There's no fracture in SPTV. Uh, like, let, let's even take Mike, Mark, and Claire. They can do their videos and I can do my videos. It doesn't even matter if we're friends or like each other. Like we're not going to be doing videos about each other. Okay. And that's the thing. Back in the day, Scientology could um, fracture an entire community because those communities were based in chat forums and they could clog up the entire chat forum by getting people to fight with each other. Right, right. SPTV people can be fighting like cats and dogs behind the scenes and still do their Scientology videos. And it it's all the same. It doesn't matter. And the truth is, there's not a lot of fighting going on behind the scenes. I mean, the fact that you're seeing videos about this right now is just, I think, a necessary function of the fact that something has happened. Uh, something has happened that if, that that th- this community cares about. Uh, there was an attempt to cover. There was a desire on behalf of some cover to it cover up. it up completely. That's not how YouTube works, folks. And my credibility depends on me being open and honest about it. Now, if someone wants to call bullshit and come up with some other receipts and call me a liar, feel free. But see, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep on with my regularly scheduled programming. It, I'm also not going to be told, oh my God, you better not say X, Y, and Z because it's going to hurt the movement. Define the movement, please. <laughs> it's like, you are it's the this, foundation. It's you this know, bullshit it. idea that gets used to try to silence criticism. And that's very culty. And I'm not going to play that game. You got to be free. You got to be free. You know, beloved bride says, talk to your wife and your girls and decide what life is going to look like. I'm ex public and was almost Sea Org. Mike was one of the reasons I left after this trip to San Francisco Org in the late 1970s. He is riveting. Reverting. Um, Reverting. I, I, I will say this I do believe that when uh, uh, Mike perceived me as uh, publicly insulting him in this email chain, I do believe his his CO Osa kicked in and was like, I'm going to throw my weight around. Good luck to you. Now, he knew he could throw his weight around and get rid of me, but I guess he didn't think that I would throw my weight around with just, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, 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 not aggressive transparency. There's this book. There's this book written by this like billionaire. Uh, his philosophy in his company is, is it aggressive transparency? Oh, shit. I, radical radical transparency. Uh, if if Mike didn't think I was going to exercise radical transparency, then he's extremely short-sighted. If he thought I was going to be bullied into letting him throw his, uh, if he was going to be able to bully me by kicking me off of this board and I wasn't going to exercise radical transparency, then he's very short-sighted and perhaps even in dim-witted. Uh, th- that's Scientology kicking in. I don't know right, how right. he thought. I don't know. I think he thought I was going to be shamed into silence because I wasn't going to want to talk about my marriage. I wasn't going to want to talk about LA. And I'm like, then you don't know me. (laughs) You said it, but you don't know me. Marilyn says, thanks, Aaron, for your honesty. The aftermath bylaw sounds straight out of the 1950s. Yuck. Hope they make changes. I will support you in your new NP to go AA Ron. Thank you, Marilyn. Wow. Bella Bratt says, this is so important. This openness is so important. I'm so happy to be part of this rabbit hole. Thank you. <laughs> well, shout out to you. Fire says, first live on this channel and subscribe. Came over from Aaron. Uh, really impressed with uh, rabbit sincerity and compassion. Shay says, well said and well done, Aaron. You've maintained your integrity 
uh, while former OSA remains. OSA. OSA. Passengers says, if we're talking about ethics, Mike Rinder needs to rescue himself from the board. Recuse. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> what? Recu Look at, see, I'm not even wearing my glasses. <laughs> sorry. Recuse himself <laughs> from the board for 30 years of fair gaming people. Aaron's personal life has nothing to do with the foundation. Hard stop. Wow. What do you think about that? You know, if the board members truly want to save the Aftermath Foundation, uh, uh, because obviously the Aftermath Foundation is has fallen out of favor. Yeah. If they were to all resign and turn it back over to me and Luis, we would gladly take it back over and put new board members on and keep it going. I don't yeah. expect them to do that. It is ironic to me that they pretended that the reason they wanted to get rid of me was to protect the Aftermath Foundation, but they're not going to take this obvious steps needed right now to protect the Aftermath Foundation, are they? No, they're not. No, they're not. They're waiting for things to calm down. That's what I read. Yes. And let me be clear. Now that I've finally said everything that I need to say, good. I don't intend on continuing to talk about this. Good. But this was the last piece of it. Now, guys, I said earlier, I said I was going to talk about what happened in LA in three months. The reason I said that is because in my mind, I was like, I don't want to talk about this until I'm divorced. And I don't know how long it takes to finish a divorce. And then I was like, but I think it takes six months, but we could probably finish the negotiations in three months. So when I said I'm going to talk about it in three months, I meant I don't want to talk about this while I'm still married because it just feels disrespectful. Okay. Yeah. And then you know what happened? People like Chris Shelton, were like, oh, there must be a court case. He must be being uh, sued over this and it's a criminal or there must be a criminal proceeding and he knows it's going to be over in three months and that's why he's going to talk about it. And I'm like, oh, oh you gosh. sons of bitches, you sons of bitches. Everything I say, unless I, unless I say everything, they're going to continue how to try and, and blackmail me. And I go, God, so I'm going to, so, and I said, so I'm just going to say everything. I'm just going to say everything. Oh my God. I'm sorry, Aaron. Like, come on. Yeah. Feels like everybody should be on the same team, but damn. Okay. Uh, Alisa says, we love you, AA, Ron. Um, Gary says, does the name Juco ring a bell? Y'all yes, met at that a Masterson's the, case. Yes, that is the person, Gary. Okay. Ooh, okay. Um, I mean, you're asking for the background, but we've just given you all the background, so I don't know if you're tuning in late. But yes, that's the person. Kat says, love your honesty, Aaron. Sarah says, we love you. So glad you're letting Rabbit support you with her skills as a trained therapist. Well, I'm not a trained therapist. I'm a, you mentioned my skills. I have an undergraduate in criminology and a master's in social work. But as far as talking skills, I have that <laughs> many years of it, but I'm not, a, I'm not licensed. So just to make that clear. Hope you have some similar support, support in IRL. Mm. Thank you, Cheeks. Uh, Blake says, Aaron, I know this is, this might not help, but no matter what you need to, you, you need, you <laughs> can't read. You did not deserve to be blackmailed and whatever happened, no one can judge you. We're yeah. only here to hear you and help you heal. Love you, big guy. Aw. So after all this happened, right? Um, I've, I spoke to a therapist for the first time after all this happened in LA because okay. I'm like, and actually, it was Claire who who almost recommended slash insisted that I do so. Good. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? If there were, ever was a time, this is it. Yes. And the thing is, I spent an hour talking to a therapist who pretty much spent an hour telling me it really is okay to get divorced. You really don't – all the reasons I was saying divorce isn't even an option. It's not even on the table. Uh, the therapist basically spent – a very, a very experienced um, person that I respect who I was talking to. Uh, and it was a, like an actual session, not just a, you know, I basically spent an hour being told it really is okay to get divorced. It's really not your fault. Your wife made decisions that were good for her. You don't have to blame yourself for the fact that your wife made decisions that were good for her. Like you feel, right. and, and, and I'm like, I don't need to spend, I don't need to pay $350 to be told for an hour that it's okay to get a divorce. Everyone in my life keeps telling me it's okay to get a divorce. And right, so right. I, I'm only mentioning that because I did for the first time go, okay, maybe I should speak to a professional because I keep getting myself in situations like this and I don't really know what to think about it. <laughs> when I say keep getting myself into situations like this, I've never been in a situation like what happened in LA. I just, right, I, right. Always, I, always, I always sort of feel like I'm in trouble. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> In, with someone somewhere. 
<laughs> but and I it think was like that, that in Scientology. I always felt like I was in trouble in Scientology. Are you going to continue therapy? I mean, it's always. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I will say this though. Right? The first like, the, hour didn't feel like money well spent. Is all I'm saying. Oh, really? <laughs> it's it's hard. To, let me tell you this. It's I don't need to, to be told therapy. for an hour that I should get a divorce. I mean, <laughs> you kind of were like, yeah, I figured this out. <laughs> You're funny. Uh, Chris Ten says, so many of us love you, Aaron. Thank you so much, Rabbit. Uh, uh, Pat says, we are here for you, Aaron. We support you. We love you. Uh, Vixen you. and DB, thank you so much. Is it M. Bulmer? Thank you for your unbiased and clear coverage you've had of all that has happened. Man, I think I covered for the most part. And Wim, Chico, thank you again. Um, I think hold up, there might be more. I don't even <laughs> there's a lot of people winning. Thank you so much. Um, your poise is admirable, Aaron. We love you for you. Thank you. And Blake says, I love that the fact that literally Mark will never be able to chase you away uh with the ads. Osa put up about him on YouTube. Oh, Get I haven't even game. seen them. Oh, because I don't I don't see ads on YouTube because I have premium. So if if Scientology is putting up crazy ads, I haven't even seen them. Oh, Serge, stop it. You're gonna make me is it is it Serge? I, I was <sighs> calling him Sergio the other day because I was hearing so much about this person. Well, Shout out what. to you. Back in the day in Scientology, <laughs> we did call him Sergio. Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> I was like Sergio, and then somebody corrected me and said it's Surge. My like, oh, Surge sorry. is his alter ego. <laughs> okay. So okay. No, so no, all he, right he, then. He, go, he goes by Surge now. Okay. So true strength lies in the freedom of to chart your own course, harnessing the power of independence to shape your destiny. That's beautiful. I love that. And then 100% uh, support for you, Aaron. Thanks, Rabbit, for this. Gina says uh, Mark Headley is a narcissist enjoying his own voice, revealing. In his bad badassery, that's a <laughs> while in uh, Church of Scientology. And thank you again. Um, and I think we've I think we've caught everybody for the most part. Uh, oh, Tiffany says everyone learns through trial and error. Most people don't have to wait until they're out of a cult. You're a great man. Oh, oh, I want to comment on something. When, yes. When the Tampa Bay Times article ran about me two years ago. Um, I was running for city council. We're sort of in crisis management mode. And I put out this statement that basically um, made reference to how hard and traumatic it has been leaving Scientology. Now, because I wasn't able to be transparent at that time about my relationship status, many people interpreted my statement to mean that I was admitting to what I was being accused of and was blaming my behavior on you know, the, the, the traumatic experience of being in or leaving Scientology. Right. Right. I, that is not what I was doing. My statement was almost what I was trying to say. And what I was hoping people would hear is I was trying to explain the situation with my marriage without actually being able to say what the situation was with my marriage. So when I talked right. about the incredibly difficult experience of leaving Scientology, I was being like, and, and the toll that took on my marriage but it was silly of me to think that anybody was going to be able to read between the lines. It did end up just looking like I was blaming Scientology for being a drunk womanizer. Like yeah. that's that's sort of what a, a lot of people have characterized my statement as justifying my behavior. I didn't do I did not call a woman the C word. That is like mm -hmm. me meaning I did not get assaulted that night by a guy who was defending his girlfriend's honor because I uh, he was defending his honor because he heard me call her crazy. <laughs> okay, I realize that sounds like this bad behavior, but it's a little different than what's been reported. That's all. Wow. I just, you're going to be starting a new foundation. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Like, what? I think it's amazing. Yes. Um, we are going to have a board that uh, does reflect. Uh, the diversity needed in order to represent everyone leaving Scientology. Um, it's not going to have be stacked with it's, it's going to have people on it who have over the last five, six, seven, eight years shown an awful lot of care for people who have uh, not received the help that they needed. And um, you know, I, I, I do feel the more decentralization 
there is in a movement like this, the better. Everyone shouldn't have to go go begging to one organization. And it's right, I, I, right. I shouldn't, shouldn't characterize it as begging. But a, a lot of people are very self-conscious about asking for help. And they shouldn't only have one organization that they can go to ask for such help. So it is it is beneficial to the community as a whole, not just have two organizations, but maybe even many organizations. But we'll start with two. Two is more than one. The more the better, right? Yes, I agree. The more the better. Like what? Th there's nothing wrong with that. The more the better. My I goodness, agree. Aaron, I have had you here for like two hours. I haven't gone to the bathroom once, and I've been drinking so much water. <laughs> oh my god! But I, I mean, because you're sweating it everywhere else. Come on now. <laughs> no, I need to go. I need to go pretty bad. <laughs> Do you have anything mm. else to say before we head out today? <sighs> You know, the, the outpouring of support from everyone has just been absolutely incredible. And I just want to thank all of you, truly, truly all of you. Um, and I feel like it's taken me this many years. How many years have I, I mean, my channels probably, it's taken me this many years of speaking out and, you know, whatever activism I've been engaged in to actually realize I've still been living a lie and allowing myself to be controlled and manipulated. And I cannot tell you, I know to a lot of people are like, oh my God, you've really been going through it the last two weeks. Guys, what I've been going through the last two weeks is nothing compared to what I was going through six months ago. What you're seeing in the last two weeks for me is the healing, is the recovery, is the feeling free. This has not been a tough couple of weeks compared to the last six months. And so I am, uh, I'm not just saying it. I, I feel so good, good about having gotten rid of the things people have been trying to use to control me and silence me and shame me and humiliate me. And it's unbelievable to me that former Scientologists have tried to do it even more than Scientology. It's has very tried to do sad it. as an outsider seeing that, even learning that that's the case. You would yes. expect that from Scientology, not from... That's right. I, I, that's as an outsider, if that would probably be the thing. Yeah. Sad so the that. future is bright, guys. The future is very, very bright. I've never been more focused. I've never been more dedicated. And I've never been freer to say what I actually want to say and do what I actually want to do. So I, I'm in a very good place right now. Yes. Aaron, you got this. Like, you are awesome. You got, I mean, look at you. You had a great community and everybody supports you. So yeah. Keep keep moving forward. And I really, I just wish you the best. And of course, you know, anything Scientology pops up, of course, we'll be talking about it over here in my non-Scientology you know, <laughs> way. But and, <laughs> and if you ever want me to come on and chat with you about Scientology stuff, I'm happy to come on yeah. anytime. <laughs> I'm going to be hitting you up. Just know that because I feel <laughs> like somebody put in the comments, poor rabbit. She's been doing Scientology school for the last 24 hours. Yeah, I have. <laughs> and I'm like, I, it's a crash course of a lot of stuff. That's just crazy. But, you know, it is what it is. Aaron, anything else you want to share before we end? I think that's it. Thank you for bringing me on. And uh, it's been really great. Thank you. I really hope you sleep well tonight. You know, after that, that is the best part. You know how when you're like, ah, and then you just let it all out. And you're like, I can finally sleep tonight. That's what I'm wishing for you. Thank okay. you. You have a good night. Okay. Good night. All right. Bye. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys on the next one. I'm going to end the stream. Let me do my little outro or outro. Bye, guys. Bye.